Welcome to this place. Camrose United Church strives to be a place where all God's people are welcome. A place that is safe and feels like home. We gather to seek hope, to experience acceptance. We share stories of the things that God has done. Acts of power and love shared throughout history. And from the stories, we learn how to care for each other. We remember how much God loves us, all of us. We are gathered as one of the many faith communities of God. In worship, we invite the light of the holy into our space. It is a visual reminder in this time of worship of God with us, among us, around us. We remember that in the beginning, God said, let there be light, and the light was born, born to bring life, born to lead the way to love. So, with this light, we remember God, there and here, creating, loving, leading from the beginning. We remember Jesus' commandment to love one another without restrictions, without barriers, without judgment. We are to love all of God's people. So, with God's life, light of love, we light the rainbow candle. And we remember the radical inclusivity that Jesus invites us to be, the welcome of God to all people. We remember that humankind, created in the many images of God, was given the responsibility to look after the earth and all things living on it. We acknowledge that throughout generations, this privilege has been abused by many. We remember the many, many generations that have cared for the land we find ourselves on. We remember promises made, promises broken. We light this orange candle as a visible reminder of our commitment to the healing of the earth and those who walk on it and share it. Please join your hearts with mine in prayer. God, Spirit, Healer, Teacher, we gather once again to still our busy minds and lives, to make space for your voice to gently wrap our hearts in love. We gather in community because this is a place where we meet others ready to live with you and for you. Be with us in our gathering. Amen.
reading from Samuel from the Spark Story Bible. God calls Samuel. Samuel was a 12-year-old boy who lived in the temple with a priest named Eli and learned about God. Eli took care of Samuel, and Samuel helped take care of Eli because Eli was almost blind. One night, something special happened. As Samuel slept in the temple, he heard a voice call out, Samuel! Samuel thought it was Eli calling, so he jumped up from his bed. Here I am, Samuel answered as he ran to Eli. I'm here because you called me. But Eli shook his head. I didn't call you. Go back to your bed. Samuel did as he was told and fell asleep quickly. A little while later, the voice called again, Samuel. This time, Samuel was more tired and crawled out of his bed more slowly. In Eli's room, Samuel rubbed his eyes, scratched his tummy, and said with a yawn, I'm here because you called me. Eli was getting tired of Samuel coming into his room and said more firmly, I didn't call you. Now please go back to bed. When this happened a third time, Eli thought to himself, Aha, it must be God who was calling Samuel. Eli told Samuel, who was now very confused and sleepy, If you are called again, just say, God, I hear you, and I will do whatever you want. When the voice called again, Samuel did as Eli told him. It was God, and God had so many things to say to Samuel. Even though he was only 12 years old, Samuel wanted to serve God. With God's help, Samuel grew up to share many messages from God. People all over Israel knew Samuel as God's trusted prophet. Eli helped Samuel learn about God. Who helps you learn about God? It was only by really listening hard that Samuel heard what God wanted him to do. It was only by setting aside impatience, by stepping back, that Eli was able to recognize that God spoke to Samuel as well as himself. The messages that God gave Samuel were different than Eli had known. Further into their story, we realize that Eli's world was about to be turned upside down as Samuel's role as prophet and guide for the people was grown by the Spirit. Eli did help Samuel learn about God, but it didn't turn out the way either one of them may have expected. How does God speak to you? In the middle of the night? Through mentors or other faith travelers? Through strangers? When God calls us, do we notice? Do we hear? How do we respond? Psalm 139. Reading from the New Revised Standard Version Updated Edition. God calls Samuel. I'm sorry, the inescapable God. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind, and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high, I cannot attain it. Please join your hearts with mine in prayer. Holy One, for many generations we have known that you know our gifts, our skills, our capacity for loving your world. For many generations we have not always lived those with love for your people or your creation. 
Forgive us, God, for the times we hear your voice and run to the wrong places. For the times when we quickly become impatient. For the times when we rush to judgment. For the times when we get caught up in the mundane and forget the abundance you can lead us into. We offer our prayers that we may name for ourselves our openness to your spirit winding around our hearts, that we will remember to reach for you in our living so that you can draw out of us those things that will heal the world, that we will remind ourselves we are blessed to be surrounded by you, inspired by you in all we say or do. Hear these words of assurance. God knows us through and through. God knows us at our best and our worst and never goes away from us. God is with us always in all of our days. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Let's stand to sing. If I take the wings of the morning and fly to the ends of the earth, reading from Mark, taken from the message. One Sabbath day, he was walking through a field of ripe grain. As his disciples made a path, they pulled off heads of grain. The Pharisees told on them to Jesus, Look, your disciples are breaking Sabbath rules. Jesus said, Really? Haven't you ever read what David did when he was hungry, along with those who were there with him? how he entered the sanctuary and ate fresh bread off the altar with the chief priest Abiathar, right there watching, holy bread, that no one but priests were allowed to eat, and he handed it out to his companions. Then Jesus said, The Sabbath was made to serve us. We weren't made to serve the Sabbath. The Son of Man is no yes man to the Sabbath. He's in charge doing good on the Sabbath. Then he went back in the meeting place where he found a man with a crippled hand. The Pharisees had their eyes on Jesus to see if he would heal him, hoping to catch him in a Sabbath violation. He said to the man with the crippled hand, stand right here where we can see you. And then he spoke to the people. What kind of action suits the Sabbath best, doing good or doing evil? Helping people or leaving them helpless? No one said a word. He looked them in the eye, one after the other, angry now, 
furious at their hard-nosed religion. He said to the man, hold out your hand. He held it out. It was as good as new. The Pharisees got out as fast as they could, sputtering about how they would join forces with Herod's followers and ruin him. Scripture is our song for the journey, the living word passed on from generation to generation to guide and inspire. God calls calls us us to be be doers doers of the word and and not not hearers hearers only. only. Thank you. In today's gospel reading, Jesus is once again challenging rules. In doing so, he made some people angry. The Pharisees perceived that he put their power in jeopardy, challenged their authority. Instead of revisiting the rules, considering their impact, they began to find allies that would help them get the troublemaker into trouble. The rule that Jesus challenged in this reading was that no work was to be done on the Sabbath. And that would have come from Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 to 10. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the Sabbath day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant, or your livestock, or the sojourner who is within your gates. As an example of how that would be applied in our modern day living, Rabbi Samuel Dresner says, clarifying that labor or work could mean, this is a much longer list, earning one's livelihood, Engaging in business or commercial transactions. Shopping. Performing strenuous physical exertion. Changing the physical world by kindling or extinguishing a flame. Repairing, improving, constructing, destroying, planting, cooking, sewing, writing, tearing. Traveling from one community or neighborhood to another. Making preparations during Sabbath for events that will take place after Sabbath ends. Engaging in any activity that constitutes drudgery. Allowing oneself to be preoccupied, distracted, or anxious about any of the above. (sighs) Or to be angry, hateful, grieved, or despairing about anything at all and defiling, profaning, or cheapening the precious holiness of the Sabbath by deed, word, or thought. From Friday at sunset to Saturday at sunset, no one was to work. No work. Well, I'm pretty sure that farmers in particular would take a look at that one and think as if... Because the animals that you are responsible for still need to be fed and cared for. If they get out, you can't let them wander because it's Sunday. Many people who find themselves in hospital cannot be left without attention for 24 hours. It's not right. It's not caring. It's not compassionate. The Pharisees took their role too seriously at times and forgot that in all the rules there needed to be some flexibility. There needed to be room for the Spirit of God to make space for love and caring. There are circumstances that mean some things need to change, to adapt, to grow. Jesus made the point that while rules were important, taking time to rest was important. Neither of those should cause harm to someone else. He used as an example the fact that a synagogue allowed sacred bread to be used to feed people. The rules said that should never have happened, but compassion and care meant that it should, it must. Rules should serve the needs of the people, not the people serving the rules. 
And here he would go again with more radical teachings to examine where God was being held back instead of being invited in. I thought about those times and places where perhaps we have held our building as a sacred place where really it's God's space to be used as needed to offer support and care and comfort. And I thought about the times when we have opened this building to offer support and care and comfort, even when it's a bit inconvenient, but it's the right thing to do. Jesus got angry. There are a few places where that very human emotion raised itself in the Christ. When the spirit of justice would rise up and demand action because it was necessary, not comfortable. What is the point of the Sabbath? Is it to leave others in need? Is it to empower hurting? No, it's not. In the face of those who would lean on the rules, Jesus did the opposite and lent on the power of love. What is the point of church? Is it to empower hurting? Is it to leave others in need? No, it's not. As church, we need to lean on the power of love to help us do what others say shouldn't be done. To break a few rules to make space for the spirit to live and move and breathe in us for God's people. The Old Testament story of Eli and Samuel is a story of learning how to listen for the Spirit to take us in new directions. We know God loves us. We know what Jesus wants us to do. What we need is the Spirit to inspire us to do it. When Eli realized that God had a new plan and that Samuel needed to jump into it, to lead others into it, it probably saddened his heart a bit. This would be a big shift. Yet recognizing the call of God through the Spirit would also open up new horizons, new ways of learning and living. There are times when the Spirit swooshes in to be with us, almost taking our breath away, like the Pentecost story. There are times when the Spirit makes us scared and moves us slowly into questions and learning, like Nicodemus. There are times when the Spirit comes to us in ways we don't understand, and we need someone else to say, Can you hear that? Like Eli and Samuel. Deep spirituality, where it all begins. Listening for the holy, allowing space for the spirit to change us and move us into the next direction. God needs us to practice love. Bold discipleship. Standing up in the face of opposition and doing what is right and good and life-giving for others. Daring justice, a God-directed, spirit-filled de determination and action to recognize what God wants us to do and be in the world. How and where is the Spirit calling us to live in God's world, to be flexible enough to allow love to lead? Let's listen. Listen and run.
Well done. We have just experienced the spirit bursting through our faith community and the generous sharing that is enabling us to improve the flooring in our upper hall and bring life to our environmental commitment to sustainable energy. We know that God calls us to be a deep, daring, and bold community. We know that God moves within us to inspire us to offer what we can to enliven care, compassion, and justice that is shared by all. We know that not everyone can do everything, but we can all add something as the Spirit moves us. We can continue to lift people up in our prayers, the sad and the lonely, the hurting, the wounded in body and spirit, those who struggle with daily living, never doubt that our healing prayers are needed in the world. We can offer to share our talents however we can, ably shown to us in the variety of talents shared at our fundraiser. Music and songs, food, hospitality, handcrafted gifts, small and large, Promises of gatherings for connections. We can offer our pennies. As the Bible tells us, every penny counts, and we know that some have more than others to share. Your donation supports the church's work in our community and throughout God's world. And I just want to remind you of some of the ways that you can do that. We do have plates at the beginning of the sanctuary, both entrances. You can write a check and mail it in or bring it to the office or bring cash to the office. We love to have people visit us, but not all at the same time on the same day, please and thank you. You can e-transfer. There are lots of options. Whatever you can do, every prayer, Every penny, every pie, joined together, makes a difference in God's world. What is the Spirit moving you to do today?
I hope that you picked up communion pieces. If you did not and you wave your hand, I'm sure Ken will run around like crazy and make sure that you have what you need. From the beginning, followers of Christ have broken bread together. We have gathered in person and in spirit at tables ornate and simple, sharing small bites or full meals. God invites all of us to be part of this gathering of souls, of spirit, of welcome. This meal we share is hosted by our God who meets us where we are and as we are. And all those who wish to accept God's invitation are welcome. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to our God. It is good to be our and we give thanks, O oh great I am, who was and is and is to be. With gratitude, we remember the gifts of your spirit that infuse us with courage and strength and faith. Through stories shared through generations, we know your presence with us, your patience with us, your love for us. With gratitude, we offer our participation in the caring for all creation, living our thanks to you. As your community of faith, we remember the faith of those who heard your call to follow, to change directions to be true to you and to listen to your word, to make way for your love to light the world. Today we accept your invitation to come to your table again, remembering the community led by the grown Jesus of Nazareth through prayer, through healing and teaching. We remember Jesus' death that reordered the ways of peace. We remember Jesus' resurrection and the prayers and actions of people passed ear to ear and heart to heart in unending witness towards peace. With the saints and prophets and faithful justice seekers everywhere who press in to help us stand firm in our witness, we praise you and sing. remember that the teacher Jesus invited his friends to God's table. Knowing that life was full of challenge, he reminded them of their commitment to follow God's teachings, to live and learn together so that the world could grow into God's vision of love. During the meal, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Jesus took a cup. Gave thanks and passed it among them, saying, Take, drink, this is the cup of the new covenant. Holy One, by the power of your Holy Spirit, may we take our place in the stories of lives transformed by your truth. With all those who have gone before us and all those yet to come, may we boldly follow you to be shaped into an integral part of your love lived in daily actions. We remember that the Church and all of its people have been given a purpose by you to nurture faith and comfort hearts, 
to share gifts for the good of all, to resist forces that exploit and marginalize, to be fierce love in the face of violence, to defend all human dignity, loving the world as you do, as Jesus taught us, May our actions join together to be Earth's voice and Earth's healing. Amen. I invite you to hold your elements in your hand. And if you choose not to have elements, just hold your hand and imagine God sitting right there. Holy One. Send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine. As we pause to remember today, join us together again in spirit with full hearts. In the gifts of the land we share, may we remember your nourishing love. In this meal of faith and transformation, may we feel your spirit fill us, ready to move us forward in love. We pray in the name of the one who breathes hope and peace into our fear and who encouraged us to pray together as we sing. Let us share together the bread of life. Thanks be to God. The fruit of the vine. Thanks be to God. Let us give our thanks and faith to God, whose power working in us in so many ways inspires us to do infinitely more than we could accomplish by ourselves. May God's love be shared from generation to generation by the church, through the Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I invite us to stand and sing. with spirit-filled hearts for welcoming all of God's people. With commitment to be part of the healing of God's world. Let us follow the light of Christ that shines into all of the corners of the earth, showing us where we are 
and where we are meant to be. The Spirit of God, breathe it in, and know that God is indeed with us wherever we go. Amen.